It's a bit early to think about that. <laughs> well, thank you so much for getting up early to talk to us today. Okay, you're very welcome. It's a long way to talk to you, but I guess that's what English language is all about, isn't it? Exactly. And, Roger, I've got to say congratulations on the brand new album. I've had a chance to sit down and listen to it over the last couple of days. It's an absolutely fantastic album, so congratulations. Well, bless you. Thank you very much. That's nice to hear. Because there's, there's no applause in the studio. No. <laughs> I, I was going to ask that. Even after all these years, do you still get nervous when a new album is coming out or do you get that sense of excitement that finally the music that you've been working on over the last few years is now out there for the fans to hear well there is a sort of magic moment between finishing an album and releasing it and this has been <clears throat> an extraordinarily long one because of the virus situation but uh, but that little it, it's still ours when we have it and then it's released and it's not ours anymore it's, it's out in the world on its own coping as best it can, you know, it's nothing to do with us anymore. So there is a sort of a, a magic feeling of, yes, I'm still hanging on to something, a little treasure that no one else knows. Definitely. <laughs> but, then, but then it comes out and, you know, it's, it's, then it's uh, anybody's business. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the COVID lockdown. We've just been put back in six weeks of lockdown here. How has that affected the album coming out? Did you guys think about holding off a little bit longer or did you decide that this is the perfect time to get music out there while people are in lockdown? Well, it was the record company's decision. I mean, the original release date was in June. Yep. Um, and uh, I think it was June, yeah, something like that. And so, yes, it was, it was, it was put back for the three, four months or something like that. So um, because of that, basically because... No one, there's no shops open. Yep. And so the only way you can actually buy music is, is uh, you know, downloading it. Yep. And and and, and a, a lot of our core audience, I mean, they, they really like the physical thing, the actual albums or the CDs. And uh, since they couldn't buy those, there's no, you know, well, mind you, there's a dearth of shops. And in any case, music business is going through a, a turmoil. Yep. You know, without this virus turmoil is going through a turmoil anyway streaming and downloading has become and it's you know and we're I suppose one of the one of the um one of the older acts that, that, that believe in in albums yeah yeah uh, to me an album is a sort of signpost of the state of the band at that particular year and i think that's it's important for us and it's important for, for our fans definitely and we're in the unique kind of situation here where we're in lockdown, but most stores are allowed to stay open. So for us, music stores have never closed. So, and for a lot of us, it's been our only escape has been actually to go to a music store and buy music and bring it home and listen to it while we're in lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you mentioned the word escape. Uh, it's a, a good word because back in the, the heyday of, of vinyl music, of, you know, the 60s and 70s, um, there was only two things important. One was music and the other was sport. And they, they became very important because they were the only ways to for people to escape poverty, for example. You could become a musician or a sportsman and, and there was a hope you could you know, rise, rise above yourself and be, get successful. Um, but since then, I mean, technology has, has leapt forward to the point where music is just one of many distractions. Yep. And, and, and it's become, you know, less, less important. As a, I mean, music back in the 50s and 60s it was almost like a religion, you know, it, it, people followed you. Yeah. And uh, uh, now it doesn't happen quite like that. Uh, it's all about celebrity and fast achievements and fame and, and all those things actually don't interest us. We were always just interested in the music. Yeah. So, you... so we're... we're we're an old hat like that, I guess. Yeah. You mentioned technology there, but we've also seen the resurgence of vinyl um, in the last few years. How do you feel about vinyl coming back the way that it has? Well, all I know is that yeah, the last few years of touring, I've signed more albums than I've signed CDs. Yep. And, and I think uh, holding something in your hand... It gives you a thrill that, that no amount of, of uh, streaming or downloading can give you. It's physical. Yeah. And, and maybe this, you know, maybe that'll go by the by in a hundred years' time. Maybe nothing like this will exist. It'll it'll be uh, we'll be looking at it like Edison's you know Edison's inventions and the the, the Victrola era. You know the, the 
the turn of the century, of the last century, not this one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so it, it, it'll be viewed like that, but, but right now we've still got it, and I, I, you know, I value it. I think it's great. Yeah. So bringing it back to the new album, tell us a little bit about the title, Whoosh. Where did that title come from, and what made you decide to call the album that? Um, well, we called an album Bananas once, and if we can do that, we can do anything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but there's a, I guess... Every album we've made over the last, well, every album with Bob Ezrin has potentially been our last album. You know, we're all in the 70s now, and we, we don't know how long this is going to go on. So every album you think, well, this could be the last album. Um, with um, this latest album, there was a, a, more of a feeling there that this could be our, really our last album. And Bob felt that as well, Bob Ezrin. Um so we decided, <clears throat> well, it's 50 years. It's not something that we count, by the way, but other people tell us we've been together 50 years. Oh, uh, one together. <laughs> together and untogether for 50 yep. years. But um, how, do you, how do you describe that? Yeah, I mean, we, we could go with some highfalutin title, you know, glorifying the fact that it's been that long. And, and, and we, we're not that kind of band. We, we, like, we like to do things our way. And the, how do you how do you express fifty years going past so quickly? And I remember uh, well, this, uh, Ian Gillen mentioned it because we, 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 you know, we saw Faulty Towers. You know, Faulty Towers, the TV program. Yeah, yeah, yep. Well, uh, there's one episode where John Cleese is in the kitchen as Basil Faulty, and uh, he says "whoosh," and the chef that he's talking to says, "What's that?" And Cleese replies, "That's your life, mate." And that summed it up, you know. We've had a life, and it, boy, it's gone by so quickly. Yep. Whoosh. Uh, and it's, it, you know, it's maybe a slightly abstract uh, way of, of doing things, but uh, nothing wrong with that. In, in, in any case, a word is a word. It becomes a sound after a while. You don't think of the meaning. Yeah. I thought the, I thought the Beatles, although I loved um, their first single, Love Me Do, I thought that they don't have much of a future with a stupid name like that. I actually thought that. Yep. But it, 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 Beatles now become synonymous with, you don't think of the word, you don't think of the, the pun that's inherent in the name. It's, it, it's a weak joke, but it, it doesn't matter. It's a sound now. Yep. And whoosh will become a sound. It's just, it's, you know, this, we, have the, we, have, we have the ability to do it, so we do it. Definitely. That's how it works. Yeah. And the word whoosh here in Australia, it, it has always meant quick. So if, if someone whooshes by, they've gone by quickly. For, for you being in the band for 50 years, you mentioned it's gone quickly, but going back to that beginning, did you ever think that 50 years later that you would be in the same band and that they would be going as strong as what Deep Purple are? Oh, yeah, it's all going according to plan. Yeah. <laughs> We're not a planning band. Usually, back in well, when I joined the band in '69, if you if you joined a band, you you might last a couple of years, three, four years if you have a couple of hits, maybe ten years if you're really, really special. You don't think in terms of fifty years. Yep. You really don't. You know, you, you, you like then and like now. You take life day at a, each day at a time. Yep. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, and you just you know somehow through all the ups and downs and the trials and tribulations of being in a band and and uh, somehow we've survived and I think we've survived because we put our, our attention to music rather than to fame and fortune yeah definitely you know, we don't have PR that gets us in the papers all the time about getting thrown out of some club somewhere yeah you know, we're not we're not searching we're not looking for publicity we're not looking for success we're looking to have fun and make music we love to make. And that's that was always the case, like even back then. Yeah. You, you mentioned... And I think in a way that's, that's put us in good stead because, you know, we're not... Maybe we've had periods where we've you know, dried out a bit, but somehow we, we, we've... Uh, that, that, that power of music has kept us going. Yeah. You, you mentioned... The power of fans. Power of fans as well, don't forget that. Oh, definitely. We wouldn't be here if people, if people didn't support us, you know. Definitely. You mentioned before about when you wrap an album now, you never know if that's going to be your last album. Do you get 
really emotional in those last couple of days when you're in a studio knowing that that could be the, the final things that you guys are recording? No, not really. We, 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 don't, we don't plan for a, a, a bad future. Yep. We constantly live in hope. Yep. Especially now, especially now when it comes to you know, touring and the fact that we can't work this year, um, hopefully we'll work next year. But that's, you know, we live in hope. That's all we can say. Yep. I was actually going to ask that. Is there any plans that Australia might be on the tour list for this next tour? I don't know all the plans. I know, all I know is that the European gigs that we were going to be, we would have been on the road right now, as a matter of fact. Um, they've been sort of rescheduled for next year. Um, I don't know about Australia. Um, I would love to come to Australia again. I'd love to go to every country we've ever been to again. Yeah. But we'll see. Day by day. Yeah. Uh, I know that you have fond memories of Australia. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've enjoyed about Australia over the years when you have been here? Oh, gosh. I could write a book about that, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we have a number of Australians working in our crew, you know. And, and so the, the Australian humour is always you know, around. Um, but, yeah, when I first came to Australia back in 1970. One, I think it was, and uh, I, everywhere I go, there's interest and and great experiences. And Australia is uh, probably because the, the uh, you speak English there. It's it's much more comfortable than places you go where, where English is the, you know the second language or the third. Um, I live in a place. I live in Switzerland where English is not the first language. So. It, it can be a little difficult, but Australians have a great sense of humour, a great sense of, of not being English and not being American. Yeah. <laughs> not, being, not English, I mean British, you know. They're, they're resolutely their own character. Yeah. And it, it, it's, it's, from what I can see, I'm maybe not living there, I don't know the, sort of the bad side of things really, but it always seems like an optimistic country. Yeah. And an opportunistic country. Definitely. Uh, I'm, yeah. I, I can't think of any particular episodes offhand. Um, it's hard, I mean, my, my mind is a jumble of details anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I can't sort them out. Uh, Roger. Uh, yeah, it's always, it's always been a good time there. It's yeah. always been a good time. <laughs> I just noticed the time, and I know we are running out of time very, very quickly, so I just wanted to ask before I go, is there anything you would like to say to your Australian fans out there before they go out and grab the album in just over a week? Oh, gosh. Well, uh, what I would say is go and buy it, of course, but that's very, <laughs> that's very business-like. Um, no, I mean, it's... Uh, what do we, what do we, uh, I'm not in a position of defending what we do. It's just what we do is what we do, and if you like it, great. And if you don't, that's great too. You know, we we don't we don't push it down your throat. But it's uh, it's an album that, that resonates, I think, with the sort of unconscious feeling that the end is near. Um, and maybe that's why we you know, it's a sort of slightly different album. It's quite a varied album, and a lot of the lyrics um, uh, seem more pertinent now in this situation than they did last year when we were writing them. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. It's, uh, you have to make up your own. I can't. I can't. You know, talk about the album. You have to make your own minds up. Definitely. Well, that was something I definitely felt when I listened to the album was how permanent it felt to how we got what we're going through right now. So. I just wanted to say, again, congratulations on such a fantastic album, and it's been an absolute honour talking to you, so thank you so much for joining us. Oh, bless you. Thank you, Dave, and uh, your support means everything. It's very good. Thank you for that. Awesome. Well, I'll let you go, but stay safe, and hopefully we do get to see you in Australia sometime in the not-too-distant future. I would love that. I would love that. Thank you. You have a great day. All right, mate. Thanks. Take Thanks. care of yourself. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.